Now we also have my man. Canelo. Canelo, Canelo, Canelo versus Smith. Yes. Who saw Canelo fighting at this weight? You know, 160 at best, people were biting their nails there, not knowing if he could get in there and do the thing. But he goes up, not only does that, but catapults himself to 175 and knocks off a former killer in the division in Kovalev. Now he's here against Liam Smith. And I mean, Callum. Callum, sorry. He already and, did, he already took care of me. Yeah, he already, yeah, man, that was bad. That was bad. But, now you see Canelo, all the stuff going on with the contract and, you know, his own De Delaware, all that stuff. You never seen Canelo wrinkle. He's definitely, he was able to really understand what made Floyd so great. The other stuff, not just the ring stuff, but the composure. And Canelo just is uber composed. What do you see in this fight with um, Smith coming yeah. up? I'm going to backtrack a little bit just okay. because I don't want to uh, disrespect somebody like Liam Smith. I, Liam did a phenomenal job at 140 and 147. There was no way. I mean, he was overpowered, yeah. oversized, yeah. And, and period. Um, let's go back to the drawing board of, uh, of uh, Canelo's career. I think he had great teachers in Lara, in Islam Lara, uh, Sugar Shane Mosley. And yeah. Floyd Mayweather. I think yeah. what catapulted him in terms of boxing IQ was definitely that fight against Floyd. And people mock him because perhaps he was not as accurate. How could, who, how could you? You're yeah. trying to hit a moving target. And if there's anybody that understands yeah. how, how keen and precise Floyd can be in terms of footwork and handwork and the rolling shoulder, he's the master of it. So the fact that Canelo actually took that risk and put his you know, undefeated up there. Mm -hmm. You know, I give him all the credit for that. Yeah. With I that mean, being said, and taking two fights against Gennady Golovkin, and I'm going to say this with all due respect to Gennady, uh, he was the hardest hitting 160 we have seen in the last fight. So the fact that he took that fight yeah. was also, for me, adding to his credibility. Then he goes up to the crusher. Um, Sergey Kovalev, people could say, oh, he was washed up, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Hello, the one thing nobody loses, no fighter loses, is punching power. And Sergey hits like a mule. <laughs> he hits like a mule. You can hear it. You, you can hear it. As for Nard Hopkins, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Moreover, at this point in time, Callum Smith would be the most complicated fight. And before he took uh, um, Rocky Fielding, yeah. That's the fight that he's been wanting to have for the longest time. This is a fighter that has all the tools necessary to make this fight interesting. He's got the size, he's got the reach. He's a natural, um, uh, and, and he walks it around like a light heavyweight. Big so cool. as a super, he's yeah. gonna be fantastic. Yeah. He's got speed uh, and power. So it's and a perfect power. combination. And it's, it's the one true test that I see coming for uh, somebody like Canelo. And no, I, I am not going to take anything away from either fighter because they're taking this fight in the middle of a pandemic in a very short notice. Let's be clear on this. Yeah. A fight of this caliber yeah. usually takes about three months to put together. Okay. They took it in less than a week. Yeah. And in, in what, seven weeks before yeah. the fight? Yeah. So my respects, chapeau, chapeau, chapeau for both of them. Uh, Callum Smith, again, a lot of people would have liked um, Canelo against Caleb Plant. Uh, politics would actually let us know that that fight is going to take a while before it, it happens. Yeah. But Caleb Plant would have been an extraordinary opponent for somebody like Canelo. His mobility, his agility, his athleticism. I think we don't give Canelo enough credit because he's not right. I'm at Canelo's biggest fan. fan. <laughs> a lot of people think that he's just made up. And I want to I wanna remind people. Canelo's amateur career was almost non-existent. He went yeah. broke as he became a dad at 16. Yeah. So he was selling pops. He learned on the job. Exactly. He grew on yeah. TV before our eyes. So he's not, you know, it's the Miguel Cotto, Tito Trinidad syndrome. Everybody loved that charismatic persona that Tito had, you know, yeah. very gregarious, happy, go lucky, mm -hmm. dancer, singer. 
Cotto's more of a subdued guy. He doesn't really talk much, but when yeah. he speaks, you better listen. You better know. Yeah. And the same goes for Canelo. He's not Julio Cesar Chavez. He's not Juan Manuel Marquez. And, and for all intents and purposes, we're talking about two regions that have given the American continent most champions than yeah. any other country. Yeah. So with that being said, the roots are deep. The IQ is there. Yeah. And he has grown before our eyes in worldwide TV. His so wrinkles, I the, yeah, the wrinkles that he's had, that he has in the game. So you got to see some of my breakdowns. I do them in the ring and I explain them in depth and sometimes under fire. So people will really understand, just like I told you, you know, we got to show people how and what it really makes you up, the fibers. And I do the same thing with the fighters in the ring. So I do levels of breakdown. And um, I say it, we break the fight world down round by round. You brought up a, a very important subject, which is the back leg. Yeah. Push back from the back leg and being able to pivot yeah. and be able to walk on your, you know, fight on your heel. Yeah. And I would love for you to give a lesson on that because yeah. people don't even know what we're talking about. It's like, it's, it's, you, yeah. it's a beautiful thing. Well, it's a beautiful thing. You'll be able to just kind of direct people to our page and our channel and they, we got tons and layers of that. And even on the website, if they want to get serious about it, we got total training camps and really the insight. We, we It's a boxing Bible. I mean, it's a yeah. university, so we're going to get ready to wind her up. I wanted to bring you back on the show just to talk boxing because yeah. that what, what people need to do, once once again, I think you're, you're going to be uh, first to talk boxing in a way that women can understand that they can get into it and involve this deep, too. And you're just not a person that comes into the game with a pretty face and a great personality and people surround them, but you really know the sport.